Hogwarts arrived. Pesta's very pleased with it. Chris has got a Cintiq. How exciting. Yeah. And look what I got. I got this print from Redbubble. This is Dina's tiny house. I love it. It's really cool. The cats are like, what have you got for us? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. She, she looks really like, what is this? <laughs> How dare you? This is my little buddy, my plastic inspector, making sure the plastic is correctly chewable. <laughs> she's, she's like, wait, um, she's waiting for the scraps. When can, yeah, she's like, when can I dine on this plastic that can chew? No, no, no. no, no way. That's so. Enough with you. Careful, Chris, with the scissors, please. Sorry. Wave them near her face. So the unboxing. Yes, Pesto, yes. Ooh. Nice. Only one piece, yeah. Bit of a dent there. Oh, not Ten. impressed. Not, impressed. Oh, it has that like that fresh, like expensive box smell. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? it? Has that like, lap, like new yeah. laptop smell, yeah. kind of. You got long nails, can you? No, I want to open it just in case I want to return the box or whatever. Return the box? No, I mean like, in the future, if I want to replace it or whatever, have the box, fine. You really want to cut it? <laughs> Not even a CG, yeah. like just cut it. Whoa, Pesto, calm down. Oh, calm down, Pesto. Oh, Jesus. This is a scissors. Okay, oh, she, she needs to calm herself. She She's like, just get it open. <gasps> oh. Oh. Bigger. Instant disappointment. <laughs> Classic spoiled brat. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. This is perfect. Ooh, let me feel. Ooh, smooth silicone. Look at that, look at that. No jank like yours. Mm. Name. Get off the Cindy. <laughs> Whoa. She was like, thank you for my, my new bed right. has arrived. You're banned. Out of here. Go Pesto. away. Get, here. Get in that one. Don't like that one. Yeah, you can, you can probably sit on that. Is she trying to eat a pl pesto? Oh don't oh don't God. do that. Oh, what's all these? Trinkets. 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 Oh, they're just a hundred cables. Why do yeah. you need all those cables? It's, it's, like, it's like extra cables and like links and power cables. Well, then maybe you should leave them in the box nah. so you know that. Get them all out. Okay. Oh, I would like that. Is that the pen holder? Yeah, you can put it on the top. <gasps> cool. And what's this? That's the pen holder as well. Yeah, it's a pen holder as well. Yeah. And you can open it and it's got spare nibs inside. Very nice. Um, what do you think, Pesto? Rate it out of 10. Rate it out of 10. She gives it a 5. Not enough plastic for her to chow down on. Good morning everybody. For today I just do like a little chatty vlog thing because I miss doing that and yeah. This is where my desk is now because I had to move it here. Sorry Pastor was scratching my sofa. I had to move it here next to the window so I could get some good light. Move some stuff around so I could film over here. So I just want to do like some chill videos this week and I hope that's okay. I'm just going to draw something, work on my horror comic. So what I'm working on right now is a horror comic. I wanted to work on a horror comic for a long time, but I think I've always been intimidated by it because, yeah, I think I've explained this already, but I think it's a very hard story to put across and I'm super intimidated still. But yesterday I let everybody know that I'm doing it via Instagram and I posted this, this image, which is the working title, Emily is Burning. But I might change the word Emily because I'm pretty sure I got it from this, the author of this Through the Woods. Emily, because I was sitting here going, oh, what's a good name? And then I was like, oh, maybe M M Emily, yeah. And then I wrote it down, and then I looked to my left, and I was like, oh, I wonder where I got that from, The So this is a horror comic by Emily Carroll. You probably know her, she has a lot of stuff online. And her online stuff is amazing, because like her websites, they, they work in a way that they do different stuff as you read the comics. So it kind of, it's very creepy. And yeah, these are just comics from online, but they're all horror and they're great. And I thought I'd just, re-look at that for some inspiration. I also got some inspiration from Joy-san. 
I will link her YouTube down below and you guys, I've mentioned her before but maybe you haven't seen her stuff but she's really cool, she has really nice vlogs, relaxed, like chilled vlogs that are very inspiring and her work is oi moi moi so I was very inspired by her because she has a lot of really cool horror comics um, one in particular stood out which is really gory and I don't know if I'm going to do a lot of gore in mine but I also, I still don't know yet so there's that and I thought what I do today is just because I was drawing some scenes I was drawing some houses so I was thinking I was thinking that I would just sit here and draw some houses for you guys because this is me trying to find a style and I really like the way that this pencil looks with Copics but it's really um it's funny because it's just it's like a really old pencil from this place called the early learning center and I don't know if you have that where you are but it's basically just a place for toys that you buy for like toddlers and stuff but like learning devices and things so this is probably like really old pencil either from me or Chris's house but it feels really nice like on this paper it's really um like smooth so there you go I was like yeah I'm keeping that like in my secret pencil case secret I don't know why it's a secret <laughs> but I'm just gonna doodle some stuff for you guys and I hope that's okay like I said just having a bit of a bleh week so I just want to chill with y'all I have a lot of zini type comics from comic cons that I go to like El Caf I really like going to which is London East London Comic Con but they always have very high standard of stuff if I go there I'm just like I want that 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 and it's difficult it's difficult just looking through different things I don't know I'm I think like I'm still trying to find a style that is a set style for myself Chris says anything I do is my style so there's no such thing but I feel like I if I want to be an illustrator then I definitely need a portfolio of work that is distinct but I guess you can't force anything either so I'm just, you know, on my little art journey there. I'm really drawn to stuff that looks simple and simplified. So I'm really trying to do that and like steer myself away from... <sighs> that's a bag, that's not a comic. Um, steer myself away from being so rigid in my drawings because sometimes I really can be. And I, if anybody knows any exercises for like loosening up, before you draw then let me know. I think one that really used to work for me was in live drawing when we do like a 30 second drawing pose and then you do 10 seconds and 5 seconds and always the ones that you didn't really care about that much like the end drawings would always be the best ones and convey something that the other drawings didn't for me anyway. Oh this is a something I got from Flow magazine. I'm pretty sure Fanad was recently in that thing but this one was about lettering and I knew that was like my weak point so I bought this just to help me practice and learn some things and I think it's been a really cool cool thing to have around actually so yeah let's get started on the uh, the drawing I need to find an image on Pinterest because these are both from Pinterest and this one is so I'm gonna do one here I really like the way these colors work out like a washed out color scheme might be quite good and then if there's any blood or anything it could be like Bam, in your face, bam, blood. Don't know what I'm saying. I'm gonna get my iPad so we can look at Pinterest stuff. Okay, so I've got some creepy house Ooh, references here. Sorry, there was like a hair, a cat hair. Standard my life, all these cats around. I mean, I've seen most of these before and some of them are a bit too complicated because what I want my story to be is that there's this woman and she's recently divorced and in the settlement she got a little bit of money so she's buying either a derelict house or she's renting a house or something she's just like I'll take it and yeah it, it sounds a bit generic but <laughs> that is where my sto the bones of my story are at right now I need to do some writing later because oh that one's cool with the trees okay so I'm gonna set this up over here so I can see it I don't know what my voice is about I'm like her never done a real-time drawing with you guys so this will be fun. This is sharpening. Where's my sharpener? I left it in the other room. Okay, I'm back and I bought two sharpeners just in case. I'm pretty worried to sharpen this because I think, because this pencil is so old that it's just going to break apart. It's very, it feels very brittle. So I'm going to be careful with that stuff. Okay. And, and I know you can find like smooth black pencils anywhere, but something about the quality of this one, maybe it's the, the 10 years it has on its age. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, what I was gonna say is the story. I've had this idea in my head and I kind of know how it finishes, which is always a bonus because if you finish, if you have the ending, then you can write to it. But if you just write freely, 
towards an ending, you can sometimes get lost and a bit like stuck. I mean, forward writing, it can be done. I think there's lots of people who do that. Stephen King is a great person who's done that. When he wrote The Green Mile, he would write just episodes weekly or monthly, I think it was weekly for this magazine who were paying him. And then what happened was that he just wrote it out straight, so he didn't even know where it was going. So can you imagine just writing out a story episode by episode and not being able to go back and changing anything? I think that's craziness, I think that shows his, his talent because that story is really cool. If you've read it or seen the film, you would know that it's a really good story and how do you come up with that and keep everything concise and... I don't know, yeah, very impressed. I'm always impressed by Stephen King, I think. He's just always working, always has stories out. Some of them are better than others, but still, that keeping up that schedule of just work, work, work. And I think, like, he always says this thing, like, if you're a writer, then you would be writing every day, but I, I agree, I agree, but I think everybody goes through ruts and self-doubt, and I think, you know, if somebody's, if you have, like, a big audience saying like you're really good at writing and buying all your stuff and you have time and you know you can spend your time um, creating writings and books then of course you're gonna be like yeah I'm gonna write every day I'm a writer I think that's easier than it's somebody who's struggling <laughs> to confirm whether or not they are any good or they're just starting out and don't know what to do, you know, like I think all these factors play into it so I don't think anybody should be so hard on themselves if they don't write every day or draw every day, etc. Everybody does things at their own pace, right? So, yeah, that's my excuse for not writing every day. <laughs> I think I kind of do write every day though because it, it's not literally sitting down typing at the computer but I do, I, I've stopped doing my comics for this month to do this but I think you are storytelling within drawing and I think, it sounds a bit bizarre, but I feel like if you're creative, you have a sort of pool of creativity and if you use it up on something in that day, it goes down. So if I was to write, then I would probably feel like empty of energy to draw. Does anybody else have like that kind of thing? There's a helicopter now passing, so I'm just gonna be quiet for a sec. It's still there, but it's quiet. Is it quiet? See, these are all the things that I have to contend with daily when I'm trying to film. This is the best spot in the house to film because of the light. And I only recently figured that out because I'm dumb. But yeah, I can't afford a big light setup. So I have to resort to natural lighting next to my open window and moving my whole living room around. Yep. And yeah, so writing. But I need to, I need to get to the bones of this story. I have the ending like I said, but I want to bulk out the characters, make them believable. I think character is everything in a story. If you don't have believable character, if you don't have a believable, non-cliche kind of character, then it's not gonna be interesting for anybody. Everyone won't believe your story. They'll just think, yeah, this is a story, and they won't really get into it. So you need to make really believable characters and not just like stereotypical characters. For instance, this uh, story I was like okay she's gonna be a divorcee and at one point I thought like oh I have her sitting at the computer like I was seeing this scene in my head I actually drew it out a little bit of her um sorry about the dog see you see what I'm talking about usually I don't talk to the camera so I it's I can just ignore the noises. But this is Dog City as well. My whole block of flats. There's a block of flat behind us and a block of flats down there and they all have dogs and they all set each other off. So usually I just zone out to the noise of it. But today they're very loud. Shut up. Anyway, okay, I'm just gonna talk. Um, yeah, I thought like, oh, I'll have a little scene here just testing out different character styles and stuff of her sitting at the table drinking wine and maybe looking at her ex-husband with a girlfriend on Facebook or something. And then I was like, eh, that's a bit cliche. I don't know like if I want to go that route at all. I mean, <laughs> she wouldn't necessarily give a crap about her ex-husband. I don't know. I don't know who she is yet. That's the problem. 
I don't know who my character is, I need to get to know her. Um, good ways to do that is to write out her past, who she is, her interests. There's another exercise where you get your character and you write out um, five things they would have in their glove, glove, glove them? glove compartment in their car. So I might do that exercise and get to know her a little bit better because at the moment I just have the bones of story and what happens to her within this house that she rents. Beyond that, I'm not really sure where it's going so I need to bulk the story out, definitely. Which can be quite tough, for sure. I posted online that I'm doing this. I was kind of surprised by the interest in it. A lot of people who don't usually comment on my other comics were really like, oh yeah, I want to see this and and stuff. So I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, no pressure then. Well, it's not really that much pressure, but there's a massive tree here, so I'm going to draw the tree in the front. And yeah, so I, like I said, I'm very intimidated by this project and idea. I want it to go well, I want to do a good story and it's the first time in like a year and a half that I've given myself time to work on something that isn't my slice of life comic. So I want to just do something completely different style because my slice of life comic, I wasn't really, I love doing it, I love uh, making that comic but I think every day doing that same style I'm not really learning anything, I'm not really um, adapting or finding new new uh, styles or building myself um, art-wise. Does that make sense? I think I just got stuck in a bit of a rut of doing that every day so I'm glad that I gave myself a little bit of time off to work on this. But then within that there's a lot of pressure because my one well, big income for me is the patron that I have for the Slice of Life comic and obviously I didn't feel fair charging people when I wouldn't be making them every day so I've like stopped the payment for that so there's also that added pressure of like well don't waste that money like I'm basically paying <laughs> does that make sense basically paying to work on this but not really because I don't you know it's not like a massive massive deal but it is for me I don't earn very much money so that's a big thing for me to do trying to get into finding ways to earn a bit more a bit more cash I think. This is really weird because this tree is actually going behind the house but it's so big that it looks it looked like it was going in front of it. So now I've kind of messed that up. Yeah so feeling a bit like ugh, a bit down this week to be honest with you guys because I feel like it's really easy to compare yourself to others and be like oh these these artists are doing this, making this, and they're doing really well, and then there's me just kind of flandering around a little bit, not really sure what I'm doing. Um, I feel like with my videos as well, I feel like I haven't done vlog stuff for a while, which is what I wanted to do when I first started this channel. So this type of video is kind of refreshing for me because this is more the stuff that I wanna do, but I don't think it's necessarily that entertaining, so I have to watch myself a little bit. And my friend was saying she works for the V&A in London, the museum. And she was saying they had like a big talk about how audiences affect artists and how they like sway them to do stuff and... Well, not sway them to do stuff, that sounds a bit, a bit dramatic there, doesn't it? How they sway them to kind of go in a certain direction with their work that they usually wouldn't, which I think is fine. Like, I think people can affect you um, to change and do different things that you necessarily wouldn't have done before. I think that's great, but I feel like too much of that can be bad and you wanna be authentic in yourself and stuff. I don't know, I do enjoy doing my other videos. I think it just takes away time from this kind of work, which I would love to share with you more. So let me know if you like watching me do this kind of stuff, because that would be really helpful. Um, yeah, because I miss doing this. I miss just vlogging and chatting with you guys. The community is so cool with you guys at the moment. Everybody's just commenting nice things. I like you guys, I think is what I'm trying to say. I like the, the vibe that we have and I don't want that to change. So there we go, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. This pen as well, these um, pro markers, because they're alcohol based. I think they're alcohol based. 
yeah, the alcohol base. They kind of smudge the pencil. And I'm not sure if I like that effect or not yet, but it's kind of cool. Like it could kind of work with this um, style. I'm trying to find a style for a comic. So whenever I start a project, I think I will sit down and I will look at inspiration for like a while, gather them up in my brain and try and um, see what I like about it and try to analyze everything, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what could work. Um, and then I just sit down and I start drawing out concepts so any sort of situations a character might be in, even if I don't have the character down, just sort of drawing someone similar to what she might look like is good. And then doing environments, obviously just house fronts aren't <laughs> going to be that um, useful in the sense of a whole comic, but I feel like within my story the house might be sort of a character as well within itself, so I wanted to get the house down, you know, in my mind of what it would look like. And I was really thinking, like, it would be quite cool if it's kind of a dilapidated mansion. So she's received this money from it, the divorce and she might buy this rundown mansion because that's all, that's all she can afford, but also it's also a good, like, buy to buy a mansion. It's quite, she's quite lucky to have gotten that. So I can see that kind of being, like, maybe cut off a little bit from the rest of the world because she will cut herself off. But I also feel that I don't really want my par character to be so affected by the divorce. I kind of want her to be like, eh, whatever about it, a little bit. And I'm not sure yet. Like I said, I need to write. I have the bones of the story. I have the outline, so to speak, because I have the ending and I have the beginning. But then just to get there, like the journey from A to B, I need to figure out. And I think I really kind of like this kind of style of house. I think this one's too obvious, like they're too obviously like, ooh, spooky house, whereas this one is like, well, it could be nice, you know, you do it up and stuff, where I feel that my character would be like, yep, yeah, I want that, I can focus on doing this by myself, fixing this up. This one's kind of cool, but it reminds me a bit of, um, of a farmhouse. Maybe that one's off the list, but it's good to explore all these different options. From this point on, I have to sit down and do the hard work of typing out the story. I think I'm gonna do it as in like a panel. You type out panel and what's happening in the panel. Actually, I'll show you. This is my old graphic novel. Please don't judge the art too harshly. It's probably about seven, six years old now, which is crazy to me. And I'm always really proud of this because it's just a big amount of work that I accomplished. So let's just peek in. I really like the colour schemes that I did. I wanted each chapter to be kind of, um, have a different colour scheme, but on the same sort of spectrum. I don't know if that makes sense. Looking back at it, I'm like, oh, I don't like this style. I don't like that about it. But i also really, really proud of it because it's a lot of work, right? This is what I did for my masters. It's basically like a thesis, but in comic style. Yeah, some things I do like and I learn a lot doing this. You can learn a lot by doing so if you're afraid to start something out then you should just go for it and then you try it out and you learn. This was my script for that. This was I wrote all this out and my friend taught us how to ha bind papers like this. So what you do is you write panel, what number it is, then you write oh, this paragraph of what is in the scene and then if there's a person then you write them there and then the dialogue. Now this works for me because I knew that that is the way that I laid it out and you also have the page number. So this is literally, this would be, if that makes sense. So if I turn to page, I don't know, seven here. Obviously I'm not gonna undertake a massive project like this for the, the horror comic, it's gonna be a short, but yeah. So this is, this is this page. This is panel 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42. And whatever they say here is said here, you know? Really helpful because this was basically my Bible whilst I was doing this project because I would take this page and then I would do thumbnails of this and then I would transfer it to a bigger thing. And this, having this really, really helped. So I suggest if anybody undertakes a, a project of a comic, then definitely do a script because I don't think I could have gotten through what I was doing without this because I could see a finish line and I could, s I had everything planned out to the 
final detail so it was really helpful so today i'm going to try and do that for this horror comic so lots of writing ahead so that has been this video's friday's videos um i guess it's a vlog video. i hope you don't mind i think this casual video is really nice for me to just talk through some things that's happening and helps me direct myself towards what I want to accomplish over the month. I'm also going to be doing a month long vlog about this horror comic so you will see that hopefully at the end of the month and you'll see my processes. I'm trying to film a little clip each day and I hope it won't be too choppy. <laughs> So we'll see, we'll see. I'll link everything that I've mentioned down below in the description, but I hope you guys are having a great day and have a great weekend. And I will see you next time, guys. Bye.